For at TV, the world is thinking. There was a guy who called Andrew Van Eschenbach, who used to run the National Cancer Institute. He's the head of the FDA nowadays. And uh, he was, he's a very decent guy, but he's, a bit, he's not perhaps the brightest bulb in the box. And he, he uh, used to say rather unwise things about progress in cancer, things that drove his colleagues completely nuts. And at one point, he rather famously said, cancer would become a chronic disease by 2015. Um, and his colleagues all winced, and privately they would tell you um, that seemed to them way premature. And Van Eschenbach himself, I, I spent some time with him. I think probably if he had it to do, I, this is inference on my part, I think if he had it to do all over again, he probably wouldn't have spoken quite in that way. But in a vernacular sense, he was just reflecting what we all think, or what most of us think, which is that every disease should in principle be curable, that every disease should eventually the sort of progress narrative about medicine that we have in our heads. And there are good examples of this. Look, there are diseases. Look at AIDS. AIDS has largely become a chronic disease, at least some AIDS. I mean, if you feel that AIDS has several diseases, which some doctors think. But some of them. And some cancers. I mean, there's this extraordinary development that Jerome Groupman likes to talk about, which is that uh, 35 years ago, almost all uh, childhood leukemias were fatal. And today, almost all childhood leukemias, with two exceptions, as far as I know, are curable. Not, not everyone is cured, but they're curable. So, I mean, we have, and then we think medicine will be able to sort these riddles out. And if you talk to scientists, they think so too, and they're not sentimental people. Uh, and I've spent a lot of time in labs listening to people talk about what they're learning, and it's amazing stuff. But okay, so okay, let's say in a sense that von Eschenbach's phrase, unwise though it may have been, was, was the, reflected a kind of vernacular, commonplace understanding. Then what are we gonna die of? Because after all, we die of cancer in considerable measure because we don't die of things earlier. We die of cancer in part because childhood diseases are controlled in the rich world anyway. Uh, we die of cancer because there are fewer wars uh, in the mass sense. We die of cancer because statin drugs have changed the equation in terms of cardiac disease. So if we don't die, if, we, if, we're, if cancer is going to be a chronic disease, what are we going to die of? And in terms of what I'm trying to sort out in this book, and this book in some ways of kind of thinking out loud, if you have the idea that, if you have in your head on some weird level that yes, you have to die, but no, you, you're not going to die of anything particular, how does, what does that mean in terms of being ready to die? Something I don't write about in the book, but always strikes me, and particularly in this country, but increasingly in Europe as well, where I spend more and more of my time. Uh, you know, are people my age, 55, on rollerblades wearing the clothing of young people? Well, that too isn't, that may be lovely and it may be good for the muscle tone, but it's not great for accepting mortality. Because if in your head you're 17 rollerblading down the Champs-Élysées, the fact that, you know, you're going to get that pancreatic cancer diagnosis a couple of years <laughs> later, it's going to hit you rather differently because you're not supposed to die of pancreatic cancer at 17. Uh, and that's a problem, and yet all our cultures are heavily invested in, you know, middle-aged and elderly people like oneself uh, dressing as if they were teenagers. I mean, uh, as you see, I have a slightly different affectation, but <laughs> it's an affectation as well. Of course. Um, I don't write about that in the book, but it strikes me that when I'm you know, when I was trying to think through what it means not to accept the idea of death, that that has to play some role in it. But as I say, it's not the principal thing that I'm thinking about or, or experienced in this book. What this book is, is 
is about accompanying someone who really desperately, whom you love and who desperately doesn't want to die.